So every now and then we get arcs with massive world changing ramifications. Arcs such as Marineford, Wano and now Egghead. All had major deaths, defeats and awakenings that will forever shape the world ahead of us. And one of the most obvious and easiest ways for Oda to showcase the unrest around the world because of these events is to issue the Straw Hats new bounties. And after everything that happened on Egghead, I think it's fair to assume that new bounties are coming our way. Potentially even the very first only dead bounty. And I also believe Blackbeard, Law, Kid and Shanks will potentially get bounties in the future as well, due to all the offence that went down between them. So with this thought in mind and how the world is forever changed due to Fegapunk's message, today I thought we'd take a look at how the events of the past shaped how the bounties will increase in the future. Oh and a quick disclaimer, there's going to be a lot of brainstorming, rough ideas and assumptions made in this video. Some if not most of them you may disagree with. So if you do then please put what you think their bounties will be in the comments below. Oh and also one last thing, I do believe this will be the final bounty increase in the series, which is also an added factor for why some of these claims may be outlandish or a bit high. So with all that said, and without wasting any more time, let's begin with the first mate of the Straw Hat Pirates, Sorrow. Now although you could make the claim that none of the Straw Hats really did a hell of a lot on Egghead overall, with maybe the exception of Luffy, but you also can't deny that Sora did take out one of the strongest members on that island, Rob Lucci, who was also the head of CP0. Now in the past we saw Sora's bounty increase from 60 million to 120 million for his part played in Eni's lobby, where he also defeated Kaku, a member of CP9. Now that also means that his bounty doubled from defeating a critical government member at that time. He then later received a bounty of 320 million after helping take down Doflamingo, which is an incredible increase of 200 million. But then after all the offense in Wano, his bounty skyrocketed to an incredible 1 billion 111 million, almost 800 million more than his previous bounty. Meaning continuing on this path and with him being not only the Sun God's first mate but potentially the second greatest swordsman in the entire world, I could totally see him receiving a final bounty poster of 3.6 billion, which would also place him just above Mihawk's current bounty of 3 billion 590 million. And this in my opinion would also be kind of like a nod to us fans that the fight between them is coming and coming soon. But now with all that out of the way, let's talk about Sora's most hated crewmate, Sanji. Sanji gained his 77 million berry bounty after Eni's lobby, with a photo that wasn't exactly of him. However, he was later actually featured on a bounty poster after Dress Rosa, a bounty poster of 177 million, and one that was also presented as the first only alive bounty poster. His bounty did however change back to dead or alive after Whole Cake when it also increased to 330 million. And then finally, after Wano, his bounty had the incredible increase of 1 billion and 32 million. Which means even before Egghead, the government considered him one of the Straw Hats strongest and most dangerous. So it stands to reason that going into the final stages of the series and the fact that almost undoubtedly he played a better role than Sorrow on Egghead, that he would receive a bounty of around 3 billion. Potentially even one as high as 3.3 billion. And if that sounds like a lot, then just remember that Sanji's battle IQ is off the charts and his Germatech is only getting stronger with every fight. Hell, in Egghead, he even blocked Admiral Kizaru's attack. Sure, he didn't really defeat anyone of note in that arc, but neither did Luffy when you really think about it. Sure, he had that minor defeat over Kizaru, but honestly, that fight was all kinds of weird, and everything about Kizaru and Vegapunk's past makes me believe that Kizaru wasn't really trying. But that's another topic for another video. The fact remains that Sanji's reputation as one of the Sun God's top fighters, along with him being a fin smoke, almost certainly allows the government to think of him as a threat. Not to mention if these are the final bounties, then his bounty being similar but not quite the same as Soros sounds about right to me. So like I said, 3 billion or 3.3 billion. The reason I chose the 3 billion as the number is simply because the son in his name meaning 3. So yeah, 3 billion for Sanji. But now let's talk about God Usopp, who is almost certain to become the brave warrior to see in the upcoming Elbaf arc. Usopp gained his first bounty of 30 million under the Soga King persona after the incident in Eni's lobby. He later gained 200 million after Dress Rosa and recently gained 500 million after Wano. He didn't really contribute much in the recent arc, but when thinking of the new bounties, one needs to consider the fact that the vast majority of younger crews and their members have bounties that far exceed 500 million, which means the same is expected of Luffy's crew. Like, you can't be the king of the pirates with a crew of cowards and weaklings, right? So it is my belief with Usopp being considered by the government to be one of the crew's fighters, and with this continuing trend of him receiving the same number bounty that Luffy once had in the past, he will receive a bounty of 1.5 billion, going into the final stages of the series. And although it has never really been stated, I do have a sneaking feeling that Usopp's dad only has a bounty of 1 billion or 1.2 billion. So let's imagine how funny it would be for Usopp to arrive on Elbaf with a bounty that far exceeds his own. But now Nami, Frankie and Brooke have always grown by the same amount, and for the likes of Brooke and Nami, I don't really see this changing going forward. But as for Frankie, we must remember that he did perform incredibly well in this arc, and even managed to impress the Fegapunks with his radical beam at one point. 
and not to mention he also managed to pierce Saint Saturn. Frankie gained a bounty of 44 million in any zombie, 94 million in Dressrosa, and a 394 million berry bounty after Wano. So I don't think it'll be all that surprising for him to get a bounty of 994 million going into Elbath. You know, not quite surpassing the billion like the 5 credited fighters, but a bounty that is damn close to it. And as for Nami Brook, I think they will receive an increase of around 500 million each. This would of course increase Nami's current bounty of 366 million to a cool 866 million. And Brook would go from his current bounty of 383 million to 883 million. Again, not quite the billion, but numbers similar to Smoothie and Cracker, who are also two lesser members of Big Bomb's crew, and two characters that I see with a lot of parallels to that of Nami and Bro. As for Chopper, I see two potential outcomes. One, he receives a bounty of 10k, continuing the running gag that he is weak. Or two, he receives a bounty of 100 million, which is still far too low as someone of his strength, but something high enough that he isn't considered completely worthless. Now as for Jinbei on the other hand, he is somebody who has consistently had a bounty bigger than that of Sanji's. But of course, he won't be getting a bounty of 3 billion anytime soon, like we expect Sanji to get in the very near future. So what number do we expect the former warlord to receive? Well, Jimba is and will always be one of Luffy's most powerful fighters. He gained his 76 million bounty back when he was a member of the Sun Pirates, 250 million after becoming the captain of the Sun Pirates, 438 million after resigning and partaking in Ace's rescue on Marineford, and now has a bounty of 1 billion, 100 million after Wano. So even with his limited role played on Egghead, we still see him gaining a bounty of 2 billion. Because he's just so much of a threat for the world government to handle, and being a fishman, he has that fishman pirate connection. But now next up, we have the first only dead bounty going to someone who for a while has been considered one of the most important characters of all time. It's Robin. That's right, we see Robin gaining the first only dead bounty. Because she has gained invaluable information on Egghead, and given her connection to Saul, who awaits for her on Elbath, she is almost certain to receive even more invaluable information. She is also one of the only people in the series with the ability to read poneglyphs and find the One Piece. Of course, she's also an incredible fighter in her own right, but in a world of misinformation, lies, and cover-ups, it's the truth that the government fears the most. So although we only see her gaining a bounty of 1.8 billion, we see her gaining the first only dead bounty poster. Because why would you risk ever bringing her in for an execution? Just kill her there and then so that the truth dies with her. But now for our future King of the Pirates. It's the Yonko Sun God Nika Luffy. Now Luffy has a faded capture all around the world. He escaped Denny's lobby after rescuing Robin, escaped and fell down after freeing pirates like Crocodile, escaped Marineford despite all the odds being against him, and now escaped Egghead where he had the full might of the buster called the Gorosei and Kizuru against him. He's the holder of the most dangerous fruit in the world and a fleet of 5,640 members. He has the Seeker of Truth Robin on his crew and has defeated countless powerful foes on his journey to becoming the Pirate King. He's also beginning to look completely unbeatable and I think that scares Emu far more than anything else in this world. So it is my belief that he will receive a bounty of 5,656,000,000. A bounty higher than that of Shanks and the previous King of the Pirates, Roger. The reason we believe it will be 5,656,000,000 is because as far back as anyone can remember, this is a recurring number in Luffy's life. From him having it on his shirt as a child to him having it as his number in Dress Rosa. Not to mention Gomu, the name given to his devil fruit in the past, means 5-6 when translated from Japanese. And like we said just a moment ago, Luffy's current fleet has 5,600 members. So yeah, 5.6 billion is what we can foresee as his end game bounty. But now with that, I think that's going to do it for this video on the Straw Hat's next and potential last bounty in the entire series. Do you all agree or disagree with me? Tell me down below in the comments. But for now, I'm out. Have a great rest of your day or night wherever you are, and peace.